Star Trails are the very best first project for someone new to astrophotography. And in this video, I'm going to show you everything that you need to do to capture and process both Star Trails photos and Star Trails time lapses like this. And we're going to do this completely on your iPhone. So let's jump right in. The only things you'll need physically are an iPhone. I'm using the iPhone 13 in this video, but any iPhone will work. And some kind of tripod or other way to keep the iPhone very steady while we're taking the pictures of the stars. In this video, I'm using a little smartphone clamp attached to my normal tripod. Um, but I've also had great success with a $12 generic smartphone tripod that I got off of Amazon. So you don't have to spend a lot of money on this project. That one worked great. What I liked about the design of this cheap one that I got is I can put it anywhere um, and travel with it very easily. I've tried placing it on my car, on a table, on a trash bin. The only thing is, since it's not very tall, it's probably not the best tripod to use on the ground. And that's it for physical items. All you need is your iPhone with a fully charged battery and some space and the tripod that you can put your iPhone on. In the digital realm, we need a few different apps. And a couple of those do cost a few dollars to download, but I think it's well worth it for what they can do. They're not subscription-based, it's one-time fee, and then you have them forever. So let's go through the apps one by one. The first app is Stellarium Mobile. It is free, and what it does is it puts a planetarium right on your phone. We'll use it to find the celestial pole, which I'll explain a bit later. The second app is Nightcap Camera. This one costs $2.99 at the time of recording. And if you're at all interested in astrophotography on the iPhone, Nightcap Camera, I think, is the one app to get. We can create basic Star Trails images with just this app, um, but it's also going to do a bunch of other stuff. The third app is Star Stacker. It costs $3.99. It is optional. Um, it's only needed for the complex workflow that I'll go through, but I do recommend it because it gives us more control when creating the Star Trails images, and it also gives us that option to turn our Star Trails into a time-lapse video, which I just think is really cool. The fourth and final app is Snapseed. This app is free, and it's my personal favorite app for editing astrophotography or any other kind of photography on a phone. With it, we can control things like the contrast and saturation in our photo very easily, and this will allow us to put our final touches to taste on the photo. Okay, with all of those apps downloaded, the next step is to get outside on a clear, moonless night, and the final result is going to be better the darker your sky is. So if you know of a park or even just a country road where it gets really dark, that's ideal. I'm now going to show you how to capture the star trails. And I am filming this during the day so that you can clearly see what I'm doing. Um, but of course, when you really do this, you'll want to do it at night. Okay, the first step is to open Stellarium. And when you hold it up and move the phone around, you'll, you can see what stars are visible in whichever direction your phone is pointed. And for your first Star Trails project, I suggest that we point at the celestial pole. All the stars in the sky appear to move around this point because it's the axis of rotation for our Earth. And that is what Star Trails are. They're the visual evidence of the rotation of the Earth. So to find the celestial pole in the night sky, in the northern hemisphere, it's quite easy. You can just click uh, the search up here at the top, type in Polaris which is a bright star very close to the northern celestial pole. And then you just follow the arrow until you are lined up with Polaris. It's at the end of the Little Dipper. In the southern hemisphere, there is no bright star close by, unfortunately, but you do have a constellation that is close to the pole called Octans. So you can type in Octans, O-C-T-A-N-S, and it will point you in the right direction. So now we have to set up the iPhone so that it's pointing physically at the celestial pole and we'll stay put. So you're just gonna take your tripod here and I'm gonna do mine horizontal rather than a vertical photo. For me, I think it looks better that way, but of course it's up to you. You might feel differently. You're just gonna put the phone into the clamp like that, make sure it's not touching any buttons. 
and just make sure it's nice and stable. And then you're just going to point it up at the stars and lock it all down, point it at the celestial pole. Next, we'll open up Nightcap Camera App, and I'm gonna show you the capture part in two different ways. This first way is easier, but the results are not quite as good, but they're still excellent. Um, and we also can't turn this first method into a video. The other advantage to this method, the simple method, is it doesn't take up a lot of space on your phone. Um, we're just gonna end up with one Star Trails picture in the end. So if you want an easy method, go for this one. It's still very satisfying, believe me. But for people that are willing to spend the $4 on uh, the Star Stacker app and also uh, are okay with a bit more complexity, stay tuned because in just a couple minutes, we'll get to the more complex way to do this. But first, the easy way. With the easy way, all you have to do is open Nightcap Camera, tap this star icon in the lower corner, and turn on Star Trails mode. You then will just tap on the screen where the stars are, where the night sky is, and allow Nightcap to automatically set the focus and exposure level. And when it's focused, you should see little pinpoints of light like this, and it will lock the focus there so you don't have to worry about it and then just press the shutter button right here. It will count down and then turn solid red. That's how you know it started. And then all you have to do is just watch. The Star Trails image will be created live right on screen. Just make sure not to bump the tripod. And I would suggest waiting at least 30 minutes. This is what it'll look like after 30 minutes, but an hour would be even better to get longer trails. When you're done, just press the red button to stop and that's it. Exactly what you saw on screen will be saved as a photo on your phone. Okay, next I'm going to go into the complex method, but if you're not interested in that and just want to skip to the editing portion with Snapseed, you can hover over the video and there will be chapters allowing you to easily skip ahead to that part. So I'm going to show you this more complex method next, but before I do, I want to share a bit about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is where I go when I want to learn some new skill or some new piece of software. Right now, one of my goals is to learn Blender. And so the reason is I want to make these 3D fly-throughs of astrophotography. I had an old workflow using Photoshop and After Effects that I think can be made much better if I actually learn 3D software. So I've been sampling the different Blender courses on Skillshare. And one thing I like is that there are several different instructors so you can find one that gels with your learning style. I'm currently taking your first day in Blender 3D by Southern Shoddy 3D and learning a lot about how to get around in Blender, learning how the toolbar works and how the different layouts work and the timeline and all of this different stuff that I need to know. So if you'd like to try Skillshare, I have a special offer just for you. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Okay, in the more complex method, instead of being in star trails mode, we want to change that to stars mode. And then we want to tell it to turn on the interval timer. So that's in this gear icon right here. We want to turn on the interval programmer and this, uh, both, both of these right here, make sure this is set to five seconds. We want this one set to take photos for infinity. Exposure should be set to five seconds. And if you want to do a countdown to start, you can set that right there. Okay, and then the only other choice in here is we want to choose TIFF, high quality JPEG or JPEG. And this depends on how much storage space you have on your phone and how much you want to use up. Because this method is going to take lots of individual photos, you know, hundreds. And so I have lots of room on my phone, so I'm going to choose TIFF. But if you didn't have much room on your phone, you could choose JPEG. Okay, then we can close the settings by just tapping the gear icon again. And now we're going to set focus and exposure by just tapping on the sky and wait for it to find the stars and focus on them. And now we're all ready to go. So we can just go ahead and click the shutter button and it will count down and then start taking pictures. And 
We ideally want to let this go for at least an hour. Um, the longer, the better. If you are worried about battery life, leaving your phone out in the cold that long, you can hook up a power bank ahead of time. When it's all done, we are going to open the Star Stacker app. And the way this one works is you're gonna start by tapping on this little pictures icon in the upper left. This lets you pick your pictures. So uh, the, this is a little tricky, but what you wanna do is just sort of drag your finger over the pictures like this and then drag down faster and it'll allow you to pick lots of pictures at once. So I'm just gonna keep dragging down until we have all of these pictures of the stars selected. This will take a little while because we took several hundred pictures. This is another advantage of this method. Um, if you've made a mistake in any of your pictures, like I did here with this one, um, you can see I had my red light on in front of the camera, which is a mistake. And I don't want to include that in the final stack. All I have to do is unselect it and not pick that one. And then I can continue selecting more pictures after that. So that's another advantage of the flexibility of this method is if anything that you don't like happens while capturing, you can just unselect those pictures. Okay, there we go. I'm done. I've selected all my pictures. I took 1,912 pictures of the stars all in a row. It took a few hours to collect that many. Then I'm gonna click Add. Okay, up at the top it says Checking. This will take a while since we're using so many pictures. We'll just give it some time, let it do its thing. And then it says Ready for Stacking. So to actually stack the pictures, what we want to do is click up on this stacking icon. This has all the options for stacking. And I'm just going to do trail style full. I'm going to do the full resolution. I'm going to turn warp mode off and I'll click start. And then this will take a while with this many pictures. Um, you know, it, it, it depends on both the number of pictures that you have put in and the speed of your iPhone, I guess. Um, but you can see mine here is going in real time right now and it's saying two, three, four. So it's, it'll take a few minutes to stack them all. But um, just like what we were seeing in Nightcap Camera, a fun thing about the stacking process here in this app is you can watch it uh, stack live and it, it gives you a live update of what it's doing. But I'm going to speed this part of the video up. Okay, so we went through stacking just a picture, but now let me show you what to do if you want to create the video because this app does have a limitation in that it doesn't seem to like to select for you to select too many images when you're making a video. So I'm just going to select the first. 200 here and I'm going to turn the video on to stacked leave all the rest of the stuff alone click start okay and then we can click the export button and choose movie and if it worked you should see this save video option right down here if it gave a corrupted file you won't see that save video option so then just try fewer uh, input images but I found 200 is safe um, so I'm going to click Save Image, and now if I look at my videos, I can see there it is. Now, if I wanted to do a longer animation than this, um, a longer time lapse, what I could do is just uh, delete those first 200 images, select the next 200, and make another video, and then with all of, and then just keep going like that in batches and string them together in iMovie which is free on your iPhone. And if that sounds too annoying, yet another way to make the animated time-lapse video is just to make a screen recording of your iPhone as the Star Stacker app is doing this a stacking of all 1,900 photos that I took. And then what I can do, since I have this screen recording, 
is just click edit on the screen recording and crop down the video to just that portion right there. Portion of the screen. Done. And then you have, and then you can trim the video down to just the part where it's going. And you have a finished uh, time lapse video. It'll be a little bit low resolution, but perfectly good for a phone so or sharing on social media. So that's an even easier way to make the time lapse. Okay, and then the last step in creating our Star Trails image is editing. And we're going to use Snapseed to do this. So simply open Snapseed, click Open, Open from Device, and pick your image. There we go. Um, then click down here to Tools and choose Tune Image, the very first option. And then you can see that top one up there right now says brightness. So if I uh, go left or right, it turns up and down the brightness. I'm gonna leave brightness alone, but I'm going to take my finger and scroll up. And if I scroll up, I can see all the different options here in Tune Image. So I'm just pushing my finger up and down on the screen to get to different options. I'm gonna go to saturation and I'm going to bring saturation way up. Now I could bring it all the way up to 100. I think that looks pretty cool to see the different star colors, but I'm gonna do something a little bit more um, understated and do maybe plus 50 or plus 60. Okay, and you can play around with some of these other ones, ambience and highlights and so forth to alter the image to your taste. Now, I think it already did a pretty good job with the star, the natural star colors, so I wouldn't necessarily want to mess around with warmth unless you were going for just a fantasy image. Uh, but if you actually want to see the natural star colors, don't mess around too much with the color temperature. Just mess around with saturation and contrast and things like that. All right, I think that looks good. So I'm gonna hit, actually, let me show you one more thing. If you just um, tap and hold, you can see before, and then if you let go, it shows you the after. So it's sort of a subtle change, but I think it looks really nice like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this little check mark down in the lower right-hand corner, and then click Export, and export a copy. So now if I look in my photos, there's my final Star Trails image, which I think looks really good. Well, I hope this Star Trails tutorial was helpful and I hope to make ones like this for Android phones and maybe DSLR users in the future. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Till next time, this was Nico Carver, Nebula Photos, Clear Skies.